I, spoke, I speak at these things all around the country. You know, every once in a while I get into one of these scenarios where these experts are there. And I tell them just what I think, and it just freaks the willies out of them. And they get, what? <laughs> Where's your proof? How many of you have got to have proof? Where's your proof? I'll give you my proof. You know, and it's so, it's so ignorant. Like, we need to prove this? We need to prove this? Some things are so obvious. It's like trying to prove, well, where's your proof that oxygen is good for your lungs? <laughs> so I attempt to prove it to them. Let's start with our scientific explanation, shall we? <laughs> Let's assume that A, a turned on woman, plus B, a turned on man, equals the best possible sex. Okay? Are you okay with it? Are you following? Does that seem logical? For some reason, this is like, whoa! Oh, I've never heard such a thing to these experts. I mean, come on. If you don't have a turned on man, kind of hard to have really great sex. If you don't have a turned on woman, kind of hard to have really great sex. So we can at least agree you need a turned on woman and a turned on man to have great sex. Yes, we, we're there, okay? All right, now let me take a little survey here. about pornography. Ladies, if you, and, and, and you have to remember, these experts, these therapists, these nitwits I call, actually use this stuff in therapeutic ways. It's prescriptive. Pornography is prescriptive. This will improve your sex lives. So let me ask you ladies, if you knew your husband had just been watching pornography and wanted to use you to satisfy himself while thinking about that other woman, how many of you that would make you feel very sexual and turned on. Let me see your hands. Okay. We'll call that zero. I presented this to some people. Said, "Well, you, you can't do that. You're not going to ask women if they're turned on. That, that's that's. They'll never raise their hand. That that will never work. This is improper." Okay. Let me change the question. If you knew your husband only thought about you, and treated you like the only woman in the world, without thinking about any other women, how many of that would make you feel sexual or turned on? Let me see your hand. Oh, so women will raise their hands. <laughs> All right, all right, come on. All right, let's see your hands again. I gotta get a count. Hands. Okay, we'll, we'll call that lots. Now for our formula, for these experts who need all right, I have checked with some of the greatest mathematical minds in the country, some graduates of MIT, and have determined after repeated and at length discussions that lots is greater than zero. <laughs> it's brilliant, truly brilliant. So we know now that porn results in a turned off woman. Well, right there, you got yourself a problem. If women are turned off by this idea of her husband fantasizing, then their prescription for porn to improve their sex lives is pure, unadulterated baloney. Because as soon as you remove, you can't get to the best possible sex. Right? And I've, I do this for thousands of people. I have yet 
to have a solitary woman go, oh yeah, that would be great. And I'm sure there must be one or two out there. But this is so lopsided, it, it, it blows one's mind. So blind are these people that the emperor is walking around naked. Oh, wow, but we've learned that. And all the experts say. Well, we know that repeat porn exposure results in a diminished male. And I'm telling you, these people are starting to notice this. They're, I'm, I'm, we're getting writings of people in, in secular magazines, liberal magazines, who are complaining. You know, hey. Men are not able to perform. This is impacting men physically. They're not able to perform as a result of this stuff. I know of men, I know of ministers who while they're making love to their wives insist on having a dirty magazine open next to them so they can stay stimulated while making love to their wives. You can imagine how wonderful that makes her feel. Why do they have to do that? Because they cannot maintain an erection if they don't see that. That is the addictive power of this thing. And these people think, this is, this is good sex? This is great sex? So we know that repeat porn exposure results in a diminished male. Well, what's the scientific sign for a diminished male? If this is a scientific sign for a normal male, <laughs> this would be the scientific sign. For a diminished male. <laughs> all right, you're all tracking with me here? All right, so this finally leads us to our scientific formula for the best possible sex. If A, a turned on woman, plus B, a turned on man, equals the best possible sex, and we know that porn results in a unturned on woman, with repeated porn exposure resulting in a diminished man, then A plus B minus porn logically results in the best possible sex. <laughs> Which means that these experts' information has to be based on broken science. You can imagine these people get really mad at me, <laughs> and I don't care. I, I love it. I love it. These people look at me like I just dropped in from Mars. This one lady who writes for you know a bunch of major women magazines in the country and, and Newsweek magazine and stuff like was interviewing me, and, and she says, "Well, I, I've never heard of such a thing. You know, I mean, is it masturbation normal? I mean, after all, children masturbate." So what? Children don't masturbate. She says, well, well, they touch themselves. So, well, I touch myself. <laughs> and, and besides, is this our standard, children? I said, my grandkids will eat their own poop if I let them. <laughs> Does that mean we should all eat poop? These people do not think, I'm telling you, they're the most intellectually dishonest people in the world when it comes to this issue. You know why? Because they're all addicted to this nonsense. And you know, I need more porn, I need, I need more porn, I need, I need more fantasies. And because of this imprinting that I talked about to you at the beginning, these men have so imprinted, they've got to constantly react and relive pornographic or naughty scenarios in their minds so they can enjoy sex. And if you've been there, I'm telling you, you need to break yourself of that. You need to refocus. You need to take out the camera and start taking some new pictures. You make love to that girl. Forget about that other stuff. Quit trying to relive garbage in your head. It won't give you great sex. It will rob you. I promise you, the key to great sex is focusing on just one woman. You see, lust is like eating snack food all day long. It'll ruin your appetite for the real thing. Your mama was right. Snacking will ruin your appetite. You out there checking out that babe, checking out that babe, checking out, checking out the magazine, checking out porn. It's going to wreck your appetite for the real thing. 
You just try it. Try it for 30 days. Anybody can do anything for 30 days. For 30 days, do not look at another woman. Don't fantasize about another woman. Don't look at some stupid magazine or pornography. You just focus on that girl and see what happens to you. She will just come alive to you. And you to her, she can sense when she's the only girl in the world to you. It will rock. You'll have the best sex of your life, I promise you, or your money back. <laughs> Let's get this right. I'm telling you, this will change your world. It'll change your world. We've got to start giving good information. Your kids need to hear about this. They've been lied. You know, when, teenage, when I do this for teenagers and for like young adults or college kids, they sit there stunned. You know what they say to me afterwards? How come no one ever told us this? Because all they've heard is the other nonsense. 